It's always a, a good thing to talk with the dealers. You know, the, the art dealers, the antique dealers are the most knowledgeable within their subject matter. So that if you really want to get the opinion of an expert, talk to the dealers. You may not buy that object, but you will learn from them about the objects that you're interested in. On the eve of the prestigious winter antique show at the Park Avenue Armory, Barron's Penta sat down with three exhibitors to get some advice on buying antiques. One particular tip that struck us for obvious reasons. Don't think of antiques as an investment. Buy what you love. If the value appreciates, so much the better. Before the show opens to the public, every piece of material, every individual object has been looked at by a committee of experts. And these are very serious people. People from museums, top uh, gallerists, top collectors, people that really know their material. And the reason that this is so important is the public. When you come to the Winter Antique Show, or a really good vetted show in general, you are guaranteed that everything on the floor is authentic, has been authenticated by an expert panel, and therefore you do not have to worry about whether you buy something that's right or wrong. The most important factors when you're looking to buy an antique or a work of art is first of all quality and if you're buying from a dealer who is established you are generally going to be guided in the right way. If you stick with a piece of quality then your piece will retain its value. You really need to shop from the best dealers and those dealers are the dealers you will find at the Winter Antique Show. Well, one of the key items we're bringing to the fair is a bird's eye view of Pittsburgh, which is a very large, massive view, almost five by eight feet. We've done extensive research on it. There are actually two known impressions of the print that exist, even though the publisher made public that they were printing 600 copies in 1859 when it was published. Uh, there is no question that uh, they never achieved such a lofty goal. Being we have several disciplines, um, one of the things we'll be bringing is a wonderful Giuliano necklace. It's made of gold with black and white enamel, multicolored zircons, diamonds. Giuliano was a preeminent jeweler. He was Italian, but he worked in London from 1860 until his death in 1895. And um, he really was one of the finest revivalist jewelers of his time. And he specialized in jewelry that uh, recreated things that he had seen and admired that you would find in museums. One of the highlights of the booth is this incredible table that we are bringing by Maurice Dufresne. It's a piece that was shown at the very famous and, and very important 1925 exhibition that was held in Paris under the wonderful title of Exposition des Arts Décoratifs et Industriels Modernes which eventually was shortened to become Art Deco. That's actually where the name came from. So this particular table is just a gem of 20th century design. The craftsmanship is just exquisite. It is it's made of amaranth wood, which is an extraordinary precious wood that you find on the commodes made, for instance, for Louis XVI. But 200 years later, the better pieces were still executed among the same high-level standards. This piece has amaranth, it has inlay of mother of pearl, exotic fruit woods and ebony, and it's just an exquisite, exquisite form. I hate to use the word investment. You cannot discount the investment value because many uh, works of art these days get to be very expensive. So to ignore the investment factor is in fact a mistake. Really, you buy what you like, what you enjoy, because there's an enjoyment factor in it. Some art will go up in value, and you will have a great investment increase. Others will stay static or go down slightly in value, but if you've got the enjoyment factor out of it, the investment value is always there. As I said to one client once who came in, he says, I'll buy any object you can guarantee me will double in price in five years. And I looked at him and I said, come back in five years. If I knew it was going to double in value, why would I sell it to you now?